Coming up. Let's do it. I want you to get excited about your life. Here we go, in 10. Stand by, camera 6. If it's happening now, we're going to deal with it now. Stand by, Dr. Phil. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Hey guys, I'm going to read you the last couple pages in Lord of the Flies. This is Dr. Phil here, obviously. Um, but before I get started, I'd just like to let you know that I have a stuttering problem, so... If I start stuttering, you should, I mean, I don't know what you should do. Also, my mustache is uh, falling off my face, so uh, if I fix it, just uh, help me out. All right, here we go. The officer grinned cheerfully at Ralph. We saw you smoke. What have you been doing? Having a war or something? Ralph nodded. The officer inspected a little scarecrow in front of him. The kid needed a bath, a haircut, a nose wipe, and a deal of ointment. Nobody killed, I hope. Any dead bodies? Only two, and they've gone. The officer leaned down and looked closely at Ralph. Two killed? Ralph nodded again. Behind him, the whole island was shuddering with a flame. The officer knew as a rule when the people were telling the truth. He whispered softly. Other boys were appearing now, tiny tots of some of them, brown with the disenchanted bodies of small savages. One of them came close to the officer and looked up. Um, um, but there was no more to come. Perceval Wem's medicine salt in his head, an incantation that had faded clean away. The officer turned back to Ralph. We'll take you off. How many of there are you? Ralph shook his head. The officer looked past him to a group of painted boys. Who's the boss here? I am, said Ralph loudly. A little boy who wore the remains of an extraordinary black cat on his red hair who carried the remains of a pair of spectacles at his waist started forward, then changed his mind and stood still. We stole your smoke, and you don't know how many of there you are? No, sir. I should have thought, said the officer as he visualized and searched for them. I should have thought that a pack of... I should have thought that a pack of British boys... You're all British boys, aren't you? Would have been able to put up a better show than that. I'm, I, I mean... It was like that at first, said Ralph. Before things, he stopped. We were together then, the officer nodded hopefully. I know, jolly good show, like the Coral Island. Ralph looked at him dumbly. Sorry, my mustache is falling off again. For a moment, he had a fleeting picture of the strange glamour that had once been invested in the beaches. But the island was sourced up like dead wood. Simon was dead. And Jack had, the tears began to flow down his face and sobs shook him. He gave himself up for now on the first time on the island. Great, shuddering spasms of grief that seemed to wrench his whole body. His voice rose under the black smoke before the burning wreckage of the island, and affected by emotion, the other little boys began to shake and sob too, and in the middle of them, with a filthy body, matted hair, and unwiped nose, Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness of man's heart, and the fall through the air of the true, wise friend called Piggy. The officer, surrounded by these noises, was moved and a little embarrassed. He turned away to give them time to themselves and waited, allowing his eyes to rest on the trim cruiser in the distance. previously introduced we are doing the lord of the flies today and without further ado let's bring on ralph ralph get your butt out here nice to meet you young nice man nice to meet you as well oh Old ralph man. what is that accent i thought you were english well that is the confusion that comes with lord of the flies i was english i was born in britain to a father named thomas and a mother named sarah my name given at birth was Ralph, as you call me now. Yeah, of course. But then I studied in Pakistan. I studied the people for about three months. There I gained an accent because there was a very pretty girl. Her name was Ashwin <laughs> Okay. I mean, I, I've never heard that name before, but go ahead. I know. In, in India, it, I mean in Pakistan. It oh, do you have a stuttering problem too? Yes. Oh, uh, all right. In, Keep on going. In Pakistan, her name means a funny thing that is why you oh yeah of course but i changed my voice so that i could win her heart over uh-huh all and, right and then we have one child his name is Sophie. 
I suck it. All right. Well, without further ado, let's bring on the other person on today's show. Wait, I thought they was the only person on TV. No, 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 no. You were misinformed. <laughs> Dra- get out of here, young man. Jick. I hate it's a pleasure to be here. Excuse, excuse me, what is this? Oh, is- I'll take care of that. All right. Well, for some legal issues today, um, Jack's face and voice are going to be blurred out. So you cannot understand who he is, even though we're on national television, which is kind of stupid. But um, let's go on to the show. Jack, tell me a little bit about yourself, young man. Hey, please don't drink my coffee. Uh, you see, I'm sort of a simple man. I served in the military. Of course. For a few years, and that's pretty much it. That's it. Yes, I sir. mean, I mean, tell me a, bit, a little bit about your life right after the Lord of the Flies. It said in the last couple pages of the book that... You were shaken up pretty badly from it. How long did it take to recover? About three minutes. Three minutes? Yes, sir. Took me about three years. Three he's, years? He's a little girl, and I don't know why he's... All here. right, all right. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> we are going to cut to a commercial break, and we'll be right back with you. We are back on the show, and Ralph, during the break, has told me a little summary about the last chapter of the book, Lord of the Flies. Ralph, why don't you just go ahead and share everyone? Okay, I will do that. Um, as you know, in the last chapter, as we went over a little earlier, I was all alone. Um, all of my friends either died or went to that ugly person's camp. That's, can you control him? That's, that's out of control. May I continue? Go ahead, man. All right. Thank you, Dr. Fields. I was alone, and I went to the place of open grass where the Lord of the Fly, the Lord of the Flies, was, and I took the the stake that his head was on. It was sharpened on both ends to use as a weapon. That night, I then went down to um, and I went to sleep. Okay. Then I went to the camp of this man. And I went to the front of the gates. Is that true, man? This is true. There, Sam and Eric were there. They gave me some food, but decided not to join my camp. Very annoying. But, but then they uh, told me that Jack, this person right here, would be searching to kill me. No, Jack. The next day. I mean, come on, man. That's not right. We will get we'll into get the that particular later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, young man. Go work. Go thank work. Thank you. Thank you. As All they right. say in my country, you got me, bro. <laughs> I think they say that in this country, too. But okay. go on. Go okay. on. Okay. Continuing. Um, so then I was hiding. <laughs> I slept in the thicket that night because I needed to hide because when I woke up in the morning, I knew I would be a tear. Okay. <laughs> Understandable. Mm-hmm. All right, go on. So they threw boulder into the thicket. It was very dense, thick, thick thicket. You understand thick? Yeah, I understand. Yes. So they threw boulder in. They threw people in. They tried to kill me. They could not get to me. So then they end up chasing me. I am running, running like the people in the Olympics from my country. Oh yeah. And the and then I eventually get to the end of the island where there is the beach. Okay. And on the beach, there is a, uh, I crawl, I fall, I fall to the ground, and I am crying, and, well, no, I actually was not crying at this he point. He was I'm, probably crying. Okay, that's and why is that? Am. Why is that? He's clearly a crybaby. I kind of agree with you on that one, but go on, come on. Continue. I was lost, I had nowhere to go, okay, the, all the boys are following me, I, it was a dead end. I am laying on the ground. I then look up to see a naval officer. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, an officer. All right, go, go on, man. Uh, officer. I have a stuttering problem, too. It's all right. Thank Keep you. On. I don't. I'm a normal person. All right. There I see him, and he, I just cry at his feet, and all the boys begin to cry behind me, and he turns his face away because... um. And at that moment, I really realized the evil of mankind. Mm. And I, uh, it broke my heart because mm. I missed my friend Piggy, the fat one. Mm. And also, um, Simon, I killed him. And 
Yes. All right, well, that's enough. We're going to cut to another commercial break, and we will be right back. They probably got me down by the end of the song. Seem like the whole city go against me. Every time I'm in the street, I hear da, 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 da. Man, no. And guys, we are back on the show. During the break, Jack has told me about a couple things. Before we get into that, Jack, I heard that you wanted to take off the blur on your face and the blur of your voice. So, yes. Jack, go ahead. Yes, I've made that decision. And uh, I just wanted to share something with, with everybody. In my, uh, when I would wake up from these nightmares, I would take the time to write down what I was feeling in a little journal. So, this is just some of the things. Did you put your phone away, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. But I'm very sorry. <laughs> it's okay. These are just some of the things I came up with. I, I, I feel that, like, man's inhumanity to man is humane. Now, that sounds very complicated. That sounds like No, listen, Russian. listen, listen. Yeah. It does, it does. But listen, you think, when you hear what we did, what we did to Simon, you think... That's the most inhumane thing I've ever heard, right? Really? When it, you, the crowd, you probably think that Lizzie Cole, Mikey B, you guys probably feel Jedi. that way. Jedi. What about you, Sydney Holtz? What? Yes, you probably feel Kyle that Bone. way. Kyle <laughs> Bone, Summer Science, but, Canterbury. But what did what? Really I'm, I'm illegal. Yes, yet. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, it's Mr. Legal to you. <laughs> it's Mr. Legal to you. I what apologize, I'm, Mr. Legal. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that is humanity at its core. What we did to Simon is at the core of all human beings. And that's what who we really are deep down. And that's that was my first that was my first thing I I picked up on. And then this one was big for me personally. This was man is blind to his own evil. As you could see in the beginning of the show, I did not understand my what my, you have done wrong. I did not and in these forty minutes I've really, really had a change of heart and I did not Yes, a change, change of heart. And now I realize that all those things we did. <laughs> Piggy's death was, was, it was, it's okay, I'm sorry. This is beautiful, this is it was, beautiful. It was evil, and I see that now. But I, I was, don't know if you're learn devices. <laughs> but I was blind to it for years. And the last one, it's just, man is evil at their core. And you see that time and time again throughout the book. It, the beast says, there is no beast, it's within you. And that is true. <laughs> the beast is within each one of us, deep Dr. down. Dr. Bill, could he finish what he was saying? And that's all I have to say. Of course. I apologize sometimes. And that's, that's all I sometimes have to say. Sometimes I get a little heated during the discussion. <laughs> Alright, well, that's a lot for you today. Alright, guys, we're back. Um... I mean, I don't know how to end. How do you thunder that much? <laughs> no, I just said, give it back, 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 back, give it back, back, give it 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 back, Don't know if you don't need love. 